Hi there, my name is Ron Rogers, and this presentation is titled Indian Airlines Flight 605 Accident. This occurred on February 14, 1990. Now, this was the second major Airbus accident, and this is part of my criticism of the way Airbus touted uh, marketing-wise this airplane as being uncrashable and monkeys could fly it and stuff like that. This is an aircraft you have to respect. It's a complex aircraft. Uh, the modes, uh, flight control modes, and in the uh, flight control computer and the flight management system, you have to understand and respect uh, these modes or you can get yourself into trouble. It's a great airplane. Uh, I enjoyed flying it very much. I was a line check airman on this aircraft and, and don't think you can go and copy this badge and get through air sport security. The only thing this will get you is uh, face down with a gun in your back. But because uh, this is outdated and uh, even if you uh, Photoshop the expiration date of 2016, which is interesting, I, I had to retire in 2015. So I guess I could still been a check airman for another year almost. That doesn't make sense. Anyway, I was a check airman on the 727, the Airbus and the 777. And Check Airman does not have an easy job because um, now you're, you're flying with somebody that's uh, thoroughly trained on the aircraft and you're just checking them out in line operations. But you have to watch out for the mistakes. And one thing uh, that I did, I didn't demonstrate these things, but I, I briefed thoroughly so the, um, uh, the student pilot, whether a captain or a co-pilot, would understand what I call the gotchas. Because every airplane has gotchas. And they're the things that can get you into trouble. Now, the Airbus is a complex aircraft with complex controls and modes. And you have to understand that. This particular accident involved controlled flight into terrain. And they did not have a ground proximity warning system, which might have given them a little impetus uh, to go around. They, the, the crew actually just flew this airplane right into the ground uh, with a training check airman really not um, getting involved as he should. In fact, he, uh, the, uh, the pilot, the captain that was being trained uh, on this approach, uh, since they were slightly steep, wanted to go around. And the, the uh, training check airman... Uh, uh, talked him into continuing. Now, normally, um, their parameters were not that far off. So continuing wasn't a bad idea. But, of course, uh, once you get in the accident situation, everybody on the accident board says, man, if you'd have gone around, you'd have saved it. Which, well, okay, if you come around for a better approach, maybe. But that um, the way they operated the aircraft was really got in what's, what got them in to trouble. Now, this was a flight from Bombay to Bangalore, um, and uh, it crashed in a golf court while attempting to land at Bangalore, killing 92 of the 146 people on board, and both pilots uh, were killed in this accident. The uh, crash drew a lot of criticism from the Indian Commercial Pilots Association. They claimed that the uh, Airbus A320 had severe flaws uh, and that the systems were too confusing and the, uh, the crew was struggling to avert the crash. Well, I don't feel they were struggling to avert the crash. I feel they, they got themselves into certain troubles. And, and I would really blame the accident more on um, a lack of supervision by the training check captain and probably poor um, training and systems understanding overall. Now, both these guys were new. The, the training check airmen, I mean, the aircraft uh, just recently came into service, okay? So you got to give them a little bit of benefit of the doubt here because the captain's new on the aircraft, and even the training uh, check captain uh, didn't have that many hours. He had uh, 255 hours on the airplane, so that's not a whole bunch of time. And, uh, of course, that's a period when you need to be super cautious, and it's, it's kind of interesting on, on the, the crash. They, they uh, flew below the glide slope. Um, they touched down on the grounds of a golf course about 2,800 feet from the airport. In fact, most people on the aircraft, in, including some of the flight attendants sitting in the back there, thought it was a normal landing. Well, they ended up bouncing, and they later impacted the ground a second time. The impact caused several of the people's seats to fail, and uh, people were uh, thrown out of their seats and impacted the structure. And then they struck an embankment, and uh, both, both of the pilots uh, were killed. So of, of the 92 people who died in the crash, 88 of them were passengers and four of them were crew members. 
All right, so they're coming around on the approach, and they ended up getting just a little bit high, um, just a couple hundred feet high, not not terribly high. A normal uh, descent rate would have been 700 feet per minute, and uh, the uh, the captain, Captain Fernandez, uh, the captain being checked out, uh, said, "Well, maybe we should go around." And the uh, the training check captain, "No, no, no, we we can we can make this. So, uh, how about we do a thousand feet per minute down, which isn't outlandish. They were they were high enough to do that. So he selects a thousand feet per minute down, and they get back uh, to the glide slope. And okay, now that's fine. Let's set seven hundred feet per minute down. So." Uh, here is where we get into the problem because you notice those two knobs up there um, with the little yellow arrows. The one on the right is the vertical speed selector and the one on the left is the altitude selector. And at the time of this accident, those knobs were the same. Uh, well, they think it's important to have, and it has been changed as, a, as part of this accident, to a different tactile feel. So hopefully when you reach up, if you're not really paying attention, you'll notice that the knob uh, feels different. I'm not sure if that always works because a lot of times in a high workload tense environment, I don't think you necessarily notice that one feels a little different than the other. But anyway, that was that was part of the solution. But here's what he did. And another part of this, the problem was that... Uh, the flight directors should have both been off in this situation. They're flying a visual approach. They should have both been off. Um, and we had a procedure where the flight directors were either both on or they were both off. And the pilot that was selecting the flight uh, director change would do both switches. That was part of the procedure. So he'd go both on or both off. Because if you're not in the same configuration of the flight director, you got a problem. And they weren't. The pilot flying has had his flight director off, which should have put him in speed mode, but the uh, the uh, training check airman, the uh, captain, co-pilot, the training instructor in the right seat had his on. So, um, now he made a mistake when he reached up. Instead of selecting 700 feet per minute down, he selected 700 feet on the altitude. Now, the uh, ground elevation at the Bangalore airport was 2,912 feet, so he selected a altitude way below ground level and because of his flight director uh, situation they were in open idle descent which essentially locks the throttles back at idle uh, the speed is controlled by you with a stick not by the auto throttle so you're not in the mode you think you are and you're coming down and they were not realizing this the uh, and and this is a, a, a it's a it's a training error uh, because they should have been very uh, cognizant of the various modes and the trouble you can get into. And it's a supervisory error on the training check airman that he let this situation occur and he did not realize what mode they were in. Now, the thing that kind of amazes me is they had a lot of warning. Now, they didn't have a ground proximity warning system. The systems at this time were kind of new and they weren't getting uh, rapidly installed on all aircraft. Now, that would have given them warning because if you attempt to a land uh, not on the airport um, and they were short of the airport, they ended up actually impacting 2,800 feet short of the airport on a golf course. But the ground procs will give you warning there that you're too low. Uh, and the other thing, though, they're coming through 400 feet. And, um, okay, that's fine. The, um, the uh, training check captain realizes at this call that they're uh, descending in open descent. And, uh, uh, you know, he, he, he points that out, but he, he doesn't really take too much action. And then they, then they pretty quickly go through 300 feet. And then the training ca check captain says, oh, you want your flight directors off now? And uh, the captain Fernandez, who was flying, said uh, that his was off. Well, the training check captain's flight director was not off, and that was putting him into open idle descent. And um, they continued on down, and, uh, you know, why they didn't take remedial action uh, before this point uh, when they were landing well short, I, I, it, it kind of amazes me, but... When they passed through 135 feet, the flying captain realized that, hey, this thing was not good. And he shouts out, hey, we're going down. Well, instead of shouting out, hey, you're going on, you should have gone around. Uh, the training check captain then realizes too, and he realizes in the standard captain's or pilot's last phrase that you never want to utter the most common pilot about to die last phrase, and that is, oh, defecation. Well, 
that's what's on the recorder. Uh, not a good way to go. And they, at that point, selected toga. Take off and go around thrust. That's jamming the throttles full forward. Of course, you know, you got spool up time, five to eight seconds. And, uh, uh, you know, they, well, the engines didn't respond, stuff like this. They were trying to blame it. And the flight controls didn't respond, all this stuff. Now, the airplane flew exactly like it was supposed to fly. And, and you flew it into the ground. And that was just a, a very unfortunate thing. And again, I attribute uh, training, supervision of the training check airman who was still inexperienced, but still. Uh, you, you've got to know your systems. You've got to be well-trained. And you can't have overconfidence. Even though Airbus claims, you can't have overconfidence in the system expecting to get you out of trouble. And the thing that kind of amazes me is they didn't they didn't realize their situation. They didn't correct the situation. And the whole thing went way too far, way too late. And this is, you know, part of being a, a training uh, check captain. You, you, you've got to be on top of the situation. You've got to be in control. You can't let the student go too far. And I think actually in this case, the student um, was more on top of realizing they were in a bad situation than the training check airman who should have intervened much earlier. And, and, and this was a totally preventable accident. And yes, it's pilot error, but I think a big part of it is training and supervision of the training uh, check airmen. Um, like I said, this is I, I flew this airplane, I instructed on it, I enjoyed the airplane, but you had to know the systems, you had to know the flight control modes, you had to know what you were doing, or you could get yourself into a lot of trouble. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you found it informative.